What's up Excel Ninjas? In this video we're going to talk about the grid control, the X grid. This time we're going to learn how to detect changes. So if you type a little something in there, you change a cell, it'll actually be able to detect that and eventually be able to cancel that if you have certain criteria that you don't want to happen. So we're going to put a change event on the grid itself. So whenever any of the cells are changed, you can detect what's going on. You can pinpoint the row, the column, and what the new proposed value is. I say proposed because eventually you'll be able to cancel that if it doesn't meet your criteria. So go ahead and grab the grid control and follow along with this lecture from our full eight hour plus course by the way this course is now included in the Excel Ninja Pro subscription program and you can get it free if you use my referral link to buy the actual X grid control if you want the full length version instead of just the trial version I'll give you that plus a bunch of demos and templates in Excel so you can actually get started immediately let's dive in now that we have the ability to edit certain cell items inside our new grid I'm going to introduce you to some important events that the grid has to offer. In this case, we're going to be triggering the change event. So it only triggers when an editable cell, like the ones that we just created, it only triggers when an editable cell is, well, edited or changed. So let's see how this works. We're not going to be able to write these events in a standard code module. We need to go to the worksheet that we're dealing with. So in this case, the employee bonus sheet is sheet two. Why don't we double click on that? and open that up here. Now, please ignore some of these different things that I have already in here. These are worksheet level events and we can move those to the bottom. These are how I make one animation load and then later an another animation takes over so that it goes in a loop, okay? So we're gonna not deal with that right now. What we need to deal with is not worksheet level things, but how about grid one? Notice that grid one has events. So I clicked, I double click on sheet two and I go to this drop down and go to grid one. And it's okay that it says it needs to reset something. Don't worry about that. For whatever reason, the default event is called key down. We don't need to worry about that particular event right now. What we want to do is we want to access a change event which is going to be triggered every time we change a cell's value, which we now have the ability to do. So let's click on this drop down and choose a different event. And notice there's a bunch of different really cool events that we can have to trigger a specific thing that we might need. In this case, I'm going to go up to the C and get change, the change event, okay? So don't worry about the key down event. I'm going to delete that, and I am going to keep this change event. Notice, I'm going to scooch this a little bit over here and scooch this a little bit over here. Notice that the change event has all these different parameters. Let me just move this here. It has three different things that it will feed to you if you have this event triggered. Number one, it'll give you the item ID. Remember the H item? That means the row number of whatever you selected. It'll also give you the column number. So that's pretty well going to help you pinpoint the cell that was just changed, right? You have the row number and the column number, and then you also have the new value. So it remembers what it used to be. Let's say we had the word Dan, and then we change it to Daniel. Well, it would remember um, the word Dan was there, but the new value might say Daniel, all right? And we'll do more with that later when we can do a validation event which means we could actually cancel the change if we didn't want them to be able to edit that for whatever reason. Let's say uh, they made the number too big or the date must be no later than a week from today or something. You can do restrictions. But with this, there's no restrictions. We're just merely tracking things. So the first thing I want to do is let's just simply debug.print. If you don't have the immediate window open, I'm going to close mine. You can hit Control G on a Windows computer or you can go to View and go to Immediate Window, Control G. So let's get the immediate window up and running right here. And that way we can see things that we debug.print. Okay, so that's just a fancy way of saying we're going to test some information and feed it into this little uh, window down here. Okay, so let's feed it, let's say debug.print spacebar. And I want to debug.print, I want to feed it the information of the word item. So what's the item number, comma, I also want to get whatever the column index, and comma, and I also want to get whatever the new value is. So I want those three things to be printed to me every time a change occurs. And for this, I'm going to make it easier for you to see how that happens in real time. So I'm going to hit Windows Right. You don't have to memorize that. And Windows right will put this on the right side. And then if I click here, that'll put this nice and neatly on the left side. So you can see both at the same time. 
So now you can see the immediate window. Keep your eyes on that if you want to. I'm going to change one of these cells. I'm going to change this to Daniel. Notice it hasn't triggered the change event until we solidify it by clicking away or hitting enter. So I'm going to click away. And there you go. There is the item ID. That's the row number. And then here's column 1 because remember column 0 is hidden. And the new value is Daniel. Okay. So that all seemed to work just fine. I'll change this to the word Bobby and hit enter. And yes, it is column one, but it's a different row ID. And yes, I did change it to the new value of Bobby. Great. So, right, so we know that works. Now, what if we wanted to get a value from a different column on the same row? So let's say that we wanted to get the last name instead of the first name, no matter what cell they change, even if they change the date or if they change the bonus, whatever. We just wanted to get the last name. Then we could do something like this. Let's debug dot print and we're going to take sheet two dot grid one dot items. And you might remember this. We're going to do dot cell value. We did cell value a little bit earlier. In this case we already have the item. We we know the current row because this event is telling us the, the current row. So item, we already have that from right here. And then comma, let's say instead of whatever the call index is, let's say we automatically tell it we know that we want whatever the last row is. So 0, 1, 2. We always want column number 2 right there. Okay. And so if I do my parentheses, let me just comment out this first thing that we worked on. So it will only print their last name into this. Let me delete this stuff here. And now let's do a change event. Let's do a change event to the name Bobby. Let's change it back to Bob. Hit enter. And look, the name Baker or column 2 for that item was debug.printed. Let's do something like change the date on Daniel Strong to a different date. And look, it printed the word strong. All right, we'll be able to utilize that tactic to read, not only write, but read information, especially when we need to know what is the Excel row number that we need to feed the information back to. Wink, wink. So you see where I'm going with this, hopefully. But the new value right here is always the current row and the current column. But we can specify a different column if we need to using the cell value. All right, so quick quiz for you. So how would we get the row number from the Excel sheet that we hid inside the grid? Think about it. Right, it would be instead of column 2, which is the last name, it would be column 0. Now, even though we can't see it, it's still always there. So now we're going to ask it what the Excel row number is every time we make a change. So if I say plus 10 and hit enter, uh, regardless of which column I did, it's going to say Dan Strong is on row 2. Now, what if I shuffle this a little bit? What if I sort it uh, some other way? All right, so I'm going to sort it to where Daniel Strong is on the bottom, but I'm still going to edit this particular one. I'm going to say minus 10 and hit enter. Now, looky there. It still remembers that column 0 says, hey, in Excel, that particular item, that particular row, is on row 2 in Excel, which if we look over here, Dan Strong is and always will be on row 2. So we've saved that information, and no matter how many times we sort this data or manipulate it or move it around, we have saved the Excel row. It's very important because in the next lecture, we're going to show you how to take the grid cell that you edit and feed that right back over into the Excel sheet in the background. We'll see you there.